Plong. Hi, welcome to Kids Charge. I I hope the little babies on the video made you smile. Today we're gonna explore the second fruit of the spree, which is joy. Joy. Now that is such a happy word, isn't it, kids? Can you give me your biggest smile? Just thinking about the word joy, Hedgy, makes me want to smile too. Now last week, we were learning about the fruit of the Spirit, and we had a verse that we were learning from Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Why don't we read that together? Kids, can you read it with me from the screen? But when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, he will produce this kind of fruit in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now kids, when we choose to follow Jesus, we become more and more like him. And the Holy Spirit produces those types of fruits in our lives. Now last week, we learned a little bit about love and that love wasn't just a fuzzy feeling, but it was an action. And today, kids, we are gonna focus on our second one in the list, and that one is joy. Can you say that word with me, joy? Now, joy is the second fruit listed in the Spirit, and I made two signs of words that are very similar to each other. Have you heard of the word happy or happiness before? Well, I've got that sign. And then I also have this sign, which says joy. Now they're very similar, but I wanna take a look at each word. Now, have you ever felt happiness before? Of course you have. We've all felt happy before. In fact, I'm feeling happy right now. Happiness may come from if you get to eat your favorite food, maybe you like pizza or maybe you like eating candy and when you do that, you feel happy, it's this feeling you get. Uh, maybe you feel happy when you are invited to a birthday party or maybe you get happy when you are opening a gift from someone or you can simply feel happiness when you do things like go outside and go sledding. Or maybe when it warms up a bit more, you like going for bike rides and you feel happy doing that. You may even feel happy when you're hanging out with your best friend, maybe you're chatting with them on your um, computer, doing a video chat with them, or um, maybe you can think back to when you got to go outside and maybe go for a walk or go sledding. Well, happiness, here's the thing about it. It doesn't always last. Now, when sad times come or hard times come or stressful times come, your happiness, we'll call this our happiness balloon. When, let's say we were having a phone chat with our best friend and you started to argue about something and then your feelings got hurt and you used to feel happy with them and now all of a sudden you're feeling really, really sad and bad inside. And you know what kids, when that happens, it's sort of like this torch. Do you see the flame there? Well, when stressful things, sad things, bad things happen, and they come whoop, at you, your happiness may pop just like that balloon popped. It vanishes, it goes away really quickly. Now, if you are close friends with your best friend and you're on your video chat, I'm sure that you will make amends and you will connect again and become friends again. But the point is kids, happiness doesn't always last. And that's the difference between happiness and joy. Now you see kids, joy 
is listed in the fruit of the Spirit. It doesn't say love, happiness, peace, faithfulness. In the fruit of the Spirit, we don't use the word happiness because it can vanish. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. And that's because joy is something so much deeper than happiness, kids. And joy lasts. We find joy in God's goodness. God is so good. And we find joy in God's presence. So think of that as maybe you're worshiping God and you just know that he is all around you, he's with you, he's inside of you. And you can find joy knowing that God is protecting you, his protection and provision is over you, that gives us joy. And we can also find joy in God's sovereignty. So just think of that word as knowing that God is in control of my life, I can trust him. And God is in control of the whole world right now. And of course, we can find joy knowing that we are saved from a life of sin. And that's the word we use for salvation. Now, the joy balloon is different than the happy balloon because do you know what's inside the joy balloon? Maybe if I come close, you can figure it out. Well, inside my joy balloon is water. Now, this water in the Bible, sometimes the Holy Spirit is referred to as living water. And when we receive Jesus in our lives, we receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is like that living water that just constantly is flowing in us. It never runs out. And kids, joy lasts. So when, remember that flame? Light it for you. Come on. There it is. When that flame comes and hard times come and sad times come and stressful time comes, guess what? The balloon isn't popping because joy lasts. It's so much deeper. Now I'm gonna put our joy balloon down here. I wanted to tell you one more thing, kids, before our video, our Bible story. Joy loves hanging out with three friends. Can you show me your three fingers? The first friend is thankfulness. Now thankfulness means when you have a very grateful heart, you are using words of thanks, you are just so thankful for all the good things in your life. Thankfulness loves to hang out with joy. The second friend is called praise. Now praise, think of praise as when you are worshiping and adoring God and putting him first in your life. Praise loves to hang out with thankfulness and loves to hang out with joy. And the third friend of joy is trust. Now trust simply means saying, okay, Jesus, I trust you with my life, with the good things, the bad things, the sad things. And when I'm trusting you, I usually see joy in my life. So let's put up that little picture of those four friends hanging out together. And you're going to see where you find joy. You usually find her friends, thankfulness, praise, and trust. Let's say those together. Ready? Thankfulness, praise, joy, and trust. Now, so far, kids, we have learned that there is a difference between joy and happiness, right? They're kind of similar words, but in fact, they're also quite different. And in today's Bible story, we're going to see a young boy or a young man who goes out looking for happiness and something happens and then he ends up finding true joy. So let's watch our Bible story now. Stories of the Bible, the prodigal son. This is Jesus, hey who is the son of God and the savior of the world. 
While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. Jesus taught everyone about God's love. All kinds of people would come to hear Jesus speak, including tax collectors and people who made bad choices. This made the Pharisees and Jewish leaders mad. Ah, yuck. They didn't think that Jesus should be around these kind of people. So Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, um, excuse me? I want my share of your estate now, before you die. Okay. So his father agreed and gave his son his inheritance. A woohoo! A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings. See ya! And moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. Huh? About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land. Aw, oh, man. And he began to starve. Hey, you! He convinced a local farmer to hire him. Thank you. And the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the food he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. Finally, he said to himself, at home even the servants have food enough to spare, and here I'm dying of hunger. I know. I will go home to my father and apologize and ask him to take me on as a servant. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son. Sir! His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and now has returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. All right, yeah! Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. Huh? Hey, you! And he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back, he was told, and your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. Woohoo! All right! Party time! All right! Yahoo! The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him. Oh, oh man! But he replied, all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after wasting your money, you celebrate by giving him a great feast. His father said to him, Look, dear son, you have always stayed by me and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day. For your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. Kids, do you remember where the second son in our story was looking for happiness? First of all, he thought money would buy happiness. And guess what, kids? It did. He took his dad's money, and the story says 
He went and he bought fancy clothes, which made him feel happy. He had lots of friends all of a sudden, which made him feel happy. He ate all this party food and he got to do party activities and had all this fun until the money ran out. And when the money ran out, so did his happiness. His friends took off, there was nothing left. And so his happiness didn't last. It ran out. And just like that balloon that popped at the beginning of our video, this boy's happiness popped and vanished. Now, the boy was feeling sad. He was feeling ashamed of what he did. And he was feeling really lonely. He didn't have any friends left. That was until he remembered who his father was. Now, the father in this story, kids, represents our heavenly father, God. And the boy, he went back to his father and he received forgiveness, he received love, he received acceptance, and he received his family back. And he, it was just like Jesus, where when we come to him, he welcomes us, he forgives us, and he is the bridge that connects us to our Heavenly Father, God. And this boy, he knew what real joy was when he returned to his father. And that's what we have when we have a relationship with Jesus. We get to be connected with our Heavenly Father. And remember our joy balloon, right? Remember, when we have Jesus in our hearts, we are filled with that living water, like that balloon. And when tough times come, when sad times come, stressful times come, no one can take that joy from us because we are God's child and he will always love you. He will always cover you in his care and he, you can trust him with your life and he's always going to be with you. So why don't we take some time and thank our Heavenly Father. So let's pray. Jesus, I thank you that when we choose to follow you, we give you our hearts, our lives. We say yes to you. You fill us with living water, your Holy Spirit. And that gives us deep, lasting joy that can never be taken away. And may we always know that you love us and you will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you for the joy that is in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, kids. We are going to listen to our new Bible verse today from one of our friends from Kids Church. Let's take a look. Our verse from the Bible comes from the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 to 9. This verse is talking about Jesus. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Kids, that verse simply means that even though we cannot see Jesus with our physical eyes, we can still love him. We can still know that he is real. And we have this joy that's inside us when we believe him and we trust him and being saved by jesus is something truly we can really be joyful about now i think we should watch a few more of those laughing babies which we saw at the beginning of today's lesson because they really make me smile so let's take a look at the laughing babies
Kids, have you ever had a laughing fit before? You know, not just the little giggle, but the kind where you're just laughing so hard? Well, I certainly love laughing with my family and my friends. And did you know that God created laughter? That's right. When he created human beings, part of that was he created us to be able to laugh. Now, I don't know if you know this, Hedgie kids, but laughter is actually a really good, good medicine for our bodies. And here are just a few of the things that laughter does for our bodies. All right, laughter can make your body heal faster. Here's another fact. Laughter helps you reduce your stress and pain in your body. Laughter can also help you live longer. Laughter protects your heart. And laughter helps oh, relax the body. Laughter improves your sleep patterns. Laughter also helps you release a lot of anger if you have it pent up inside. And laughter can also help you forgive sooner. Laughter boosts your mood and it releases these feel-good hormones in your body. And did you know that laughter helps people connect with each other? And I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but if you're around someone who loves to laugh a lot, you actually feel a better just hanging out with them. And sometimes it's contagious and you feel like laughing along. Now, these are just a few fun facts about laughter, which God created. God loves it when we experience happiness. But kids, I want you to know that deep, meaningful joy is what really counts, what really matters. So I pray, kids, that you would experience the joy of the Lord. Let it be your strength this week, and I will see you next time.